Turbinado sugar. Turbinado. Turbinado. <laughs> Come on, you... God, come, come, you nut! Stone Imperial Nut Brown Ale. Everybody who knows anything about the contemporary brewing world, or beer world, knows who Stone are. Um, they were started in 1996 in California. And um, now they're known all across the world. Recent, well, I think three years ago, Stone started to do their Spotlight series. And the Spotlight series pits Stone's own brewers against each other um, in a friendly competition to get their own beer brewed and distributed across California and evidently uh, much further away because I'm in the UK. Um, this one is Mutt Brown Ale, an Imperial Mutt Brown Ale by Drew and Steve, who won, uh, who won it for 2015. And I think if we check the date, ah, bottled, yeah, 2015. So this one was uh, the winner from 2015. Um, and uh, it's a mutt because it's got US malt, German malt, Canadian malt, English yeast, English hops, German hops, it's a mutt. Uh, if you check the link below, you can go straight to Stone's beautiful website where they um, have a, a whole video about it, um, about the choices that went into making it and so on. But what we need to know right now is that it's got a Vienna malt base. Um, there's some chocolate wheat in there. There's some honey malt, which I'm looking forward to trying because that's not a malt that I'm familiar with. Um, honey malt is made by restricting the oxygen flow to to the grain when it's sprouting during the malting process so that um, the grain bed heats up and this kind of uh, brings certain sugars out or like to form certain sugars um, that give it quite a honey like flavour so I'm really looking forward to um, experiencing that. On Stone's website, they also give some suggestions for food pairings, which is quite cool. Um, I just made a note of a couple. Uh, coffee rubbed pork. Which I've never had. Um, and treacle pudding. Hmm, there's an idea. Right now, though, I'm going to try it on its own. Stone's Imperial Mutt Brown Ale. You'll probably see me use many glasses um, over these videos because I do break them, but I do have a backup of this one. This is the Triple Carmeliet uh, glass. Um, and after buying a gift set of it, I found a spare one in a charity shop for £1.50. Right, let's try the beer. There is some um, vapour, there was some vapour pouring out then, it was, it was really nice. Big, boozy, There's a really interesting, I think it's the wheat, gives it a kind of dusty, very slightly green, powdery kind of aroma. I really want to drink some, but I need to smell it more. Wow, the chocolate just bursts out like it's kind of like vaporized chocolate. And it just goes right down the back of your, right up into your sinuses, but kind of like a milky sort of chocolate. You know, not really dark, um, but also not 
sickly sweet, or not sweet at all, dry yet soft. Like I said, it is boozy, but although it does sort of fill your sinuses, it's it's also not stingy or kind of solventy. The head is a really, really nice colour. <laughs> I'm not sure how to describe it. I highly recommend these, by the way. I think they're called plastic beer reseals. Um, but I call them beer hats. Yeah, well, they're a bit small for me. Pop a cap on, back on, and um, it's just a cheap option for um, you know keeping your beer okay while you sort of taste a bit of it, and then you know you don't want to let it all go flat or go warm in your bottle all at once, in your glass all at once. It's a kind of a dry chocolate, sort of milky, almost hay-like character. Reminds me very slightly of hamster beds. <laughs> you know, like the little hay stuff that hamsters live on, but in a good way, if that can make any sense. And I do feel as though I'm getting slight honey aromas coming out of this. But it's impossible to say whether that's because I know that there's honey malt in there and I'm, ex and I'm kind of expecting there to be some honeyness. But there is an unusual aspect to it which really only honey is the best way of describing it. So I think that honey malt really does make qu quite a big difference. I don't know how much is in there. It's very good, it's very nice. Um, it is quite boozy, but it's not stingy or solventy, um, which is exactly how you want your booziness, really. You wouldn't necessarily guess it was 9%. It's, it's well masked, considering. As you can see, it's a deep, sort of, pretty much black, basically. Very, very dark, deep brown. Um, and the head is sort of beautiful it's tan with kind of hints of orange kind of caramelly tan sort of flavor uh, flavor I, call it, I want to call everything a flavor yeah beautiful kind of tan sort of caramac kind of it's good really good mm. And the flavour is kind of multi-layered. At first, it's really Moorish as well. First, you get a, a little bit of sweetness, a kind of milkiness, just for a fleeting moment, akin to what you get in a in a milk stout. But then that gives way to a kind of like much deeper darker kind of chocolatey sort of a roastiness um, and in your mouth is completely full and it kind of changes uh, and eventually it sort of finishes with this dry kind of roast you know almost charred chocolatey note um, and later coming through to a sort of mature marmite kind of flavour um, and often marmite isn't such a good sign or such a pleasant flavour in a beer, but this is kind of spread out and softened in such a way as that it's actually really, really nice and it kind of finishes off that flavour journey really well. Mouthfeel. Fine carbonation, but present, but not overwhelming, which is what I would hope for from a beer of this kind of colour, of this kind of style. And the sort of the thickness of the beer itself is just amazing. As I said, it coats your mouth. It is really satisfying. It really feels like you're drinking a meal. Some people say Guinness is like drinking a meal. <laughs> well, 
you know, this is not bad. <laughs> Overall, it's a fantastic, really unusual beer. And it's got the whole range, well, it's got a huge range of flavour delivered as a journey. Uh, it's thick and decadent at first, sweet, chocolatey, and then it goes through roasty, drier, kind of almost charred sort of flavours. Brown ale has a kind of a negative reputation, really. Uh, you know, like twiggy brown, um, just like boring brown ale. And, uh, you know, often you can find that ales are boring and brown. Um, but that doesn't mean all brown ales are boring. And this beer, Imperial Mutt Brown, really proves that. And um, it's important that beers like this are getting made to sort of shift that perception of brown ale. It works. It works. It really works. 